الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام علي على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم brothers and sisters I just want to discuss the topic about forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether he will be forgiving our sins or not basically a lot of people especially a lot of the Muslim brothers out there who are who have deviated from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what, what he has commanded they've actually gone to such an extent in committing their sins that they believe there's no return there's absolutely no chance you know there's, there's, not, there's not a possibility that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might forgive us you know and it's almost as if they just want to carry on doing what they're doing and you know they don't want to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, but of course you know you can always make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know it's just about taking that first step you know it doesn't matter what sins you've committed regardless of whatever sins you have committed in your life you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we need to understand that He is the most forgiving, you know. You know, in humans, you know, for example, I hit your car once, you know, you might, you, you obviously you're not going to be happy, but, you know, you might forgive me. I hit your car twice, again, you will forgive me. Third time, it's going to really annoy you, you know. You're going to be like, now you're taking the liberties. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like that. And He is prepared to forgive your sins no matter how big or small they are. But the condition is for you to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then start doing good deeds, you know, till the point of death. So don't think for once that, you know, your sins are so much, you might think that if I now turn to Islam, I might look like a hypocrite or what are my friends going to think? What's my family going to think? You know, this person, he never prayed once in his life and now all of a sudden he's got a prayer mat and he's praying, you know. That's the devil coming to you. That's a shaitan who's been appointed just for you, who's working his socks off 24-7, 365 days a year, just for you not to repent. That's one of the most things that the shaitan, from my research, is scared about, is the fact that he's scared that you might just turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day, and repent to him sincerely from the bottom of your heart and that Allah might forgive you SubhanAllah that's just how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is He is ready to forgive in fact I've got it written here one second the shaitan Iblis said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just listen to this very carefully shaitan said I swear by your honor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I swear by your honor that I will keep on misguiding your servant as long as they live. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, the shaitan has taken a promise, an oath, that I will drag as much as your slaves as I can down with me to hellfire. He just doesn't want to go alone. So listen to this. I swear by your honor that I will keep on misguiding your servants as long as they live <laughs> an immediate reply from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful the most forgiving the most compassionate the most loving 
He goes, Allah goes, I swear by my dignity that I will forgive them, all of them, as long as, as they continue to seek my pardon. Let me, let me repeat that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I swear by my dignity that I will forgive them all as long as they continue to seek my pardon. So why can't we seek the pardon? You know, why can we not repent? Why are we shy? You know, why are we shy to, you know, why do we not have that capability to turn to Allah and say, you know Allah, I've screwed up big time for X number of years and I've done X, Y and Z. Please Allah, from the bottom of my heart, I seek your forgiveness, you know, I seek your mercy, you know, and I seek the right direction. I want to correct myself. I'll come to a stage of my life, I want to correct myself. To be honest, you know, not long ago, I was on the wrong path. You know, I probably still am. But Alhamdulillah, I feel that, I just feel that Allah has guided me. You know, I've done everything out there, to be honest, during the university years, college years. But now I look back at it and I just laugh and I think, why did I even do that? Did I not realize there's a creator that I have to be accountable for? Accountable to? For all the sins that I've committed? And trust me, when I first started coming towards reading five times a law, gaining knowledge about Islam, reading Quran, especially Surah Baqarah, I was scared. When I read the translation of Surah Baqarah, talking about hellfire and people who transgress their souls, I was scared. I was like, all my days, I've done so many wrong things in my life. I'm going to hell, you know, surely. But then you carry on reading and you do more research about Islam and you have to understand the very first word that was released to Hazrat Muhammad from Hazrat Jibreel was Iqra, read, 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 read. And so as I continued to do more reading, you know, initially I was shivering. When I read Surah Baqarah, I was shivering. I was like, whoa, what have I done? Please, please, can I rewind back time and start all over again, oh my god, you know, how, I can't believe I've actually done all these things. So I, was, I got really panicky, I got really depressed, I got really tense, thinking, you know, you know, what's the future for me? But then, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he guided me and doing more research, you know, genuine research about Islam from the Quran, from the Sahih Hadith, I found out, you know, his mercy is beyond our thinking capacity. He is so merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you put your sins from the ground to the heavens and just turn once towards me and seek forgiveness from the bottom of your heart sincerely and get onto the correct path do righteous good deeds, you know, all the de all the commands that he's mentioned, inshallah, I will forgive you, I will forgive you, you know, you know, so Allah is the most merciful, I mean, he says in one of the ayahs that was revealed to Hazrat Muhammad wasallam, it was, say, oh my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds and sins any evil deed, drinking alcohol, smoking, flirting, going out with women drugs, you name it, right? sexual intercourse so it says, say my slaves, oh my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing evil deeds and sin Despair not the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins truly he is the most forgiving and the most merciful this even includes the sin of shirk so whoever repents from the sin of shirk before his death comes to him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him and this is something we don't think about and this is something that we really need to think about that it doesn't matter how much wrong you've done in your life you can still make Tawbah you can still repent you can still seek Allah's forgiveness and then his guidance and put you onto the right track the track that's going straight to Jannah al Firdaus and Jannah it's a very hard track which has so many temptations so many desires but to be honest when you get close to Allah day by day those temptations yeah they come and go but they don't mean anything anymore you know, money doesn't have a primary role in your life anymore seeing all these women you know it doesn't tempt you with anything anymore you know seeing all these flashy cars doesn't motivate you anymore to have this you know in fact you look at the stars you look at the moon you look at the sky you look at everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and you're just motivated towards this you know it's like whoa you know the creator mashallah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the, look at his creation everything is so unique so perfect you know and it's been there for billions of years millions or billions of years and everything is working so efficiently no man or all mankind put together could run this I mean look at the stars you know look at the distances they are from us you know and, you know look at the Sun you can fit a million Earths into a Sun and then probably a million suns into a star another star and then probably a million stars into another bigger star and then it just it just carries on and it makes you think you know that's one of the you know just his might, you know, he says, I am the all powerful. You know, I'm, I'm the king of all kings. I have as many kings as you want, but I am the king of all kings. So, we're not here to mess with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No way. You know, we commit sins. You know, we hide it from our parents, we hide it from society, you know. What we don't realize, you know, when we're alone and we're committing that sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there and the angels are there who are witnessing this heinous crime that you're doing. Yeah. So, he's obviously going to be displeased. He's going to be upset and angry. But, you know, we really need to, you know, I see the youngsters now and it reminds me of my time then it's like I literally want to scream out at them and say whoa you know please guys stop this now you know get on the deen do your dunya balance your dunya but get onto the deen get onto your salah read your Quran do zikr of Allah get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart get close to him feel that closeness and it will stop you from all the temptations that you see outside slowly but surely <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and those who invoke not any other God along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nor kill such person as Allah has forbidden except for a just cause nor commit illegal sexual intercourse and whoever does this shall receive, receive this punishment <coughs> the torment of this will actually be double to him on the day of resurrection and he will abide therein in disgrace that scares you it's like whoa you know illegal sexual intercourse you know my punishment is going to be doubled on the day of resurrection but mashallah surah furqan Al Furqan verse 70, the very next ayah, it says, Except those who repent and believe in Islam and do righteous good deeds for those Allah, listen to this, for those Allah 
will change the sins into good deeds and Allah is the oft forgiving and the most merciful so imagine all those piles of sins that are coming to your head that you've done for the last God knows 10, 15, 20 years, 40 years, 50 years, whatever just imagine a sincere repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change all those mountains of bad deeds into good deeds and we still can't say Tawbah that's something to think about my brothers and sisters it's really something to this about think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maida chapter chapter 5 verse 30 73 74 will they not turn with repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask his forgiveness for Allah is the most forgiving the most merciful no matter how great the sin the forgiveness the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much greater much 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 greater than your sin you can think of the biggest biggest sin you've ever done but his forgiveness is bigger than that <coughs> so brothers and sisters you know please please I literally beg you to seek Allah's forgiveness for whatever you've done it doesn't matter how big or how small it's irrelevant sit there read your namaz and after your namaz just sit there for five ten minutes and just look down at your prayer mat and just imagine that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in front of you you know it's a direct connection and just think of all the bad things you've done and I'm telling you brothers and sisters it will make you start crying like a baby and when you let it all out the feeling you get afterwards is amazing you feel like all the burden of sins of your shoulders on your shoulders has just been removed you actually feel that rahmah that barqa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately with immediate effect you feel it every time you sit there on the yanmas on the prayer mat and you make Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm telling you brothers and sisters the burden that is released the feeling I've never felt it before ever in my life <coughs> so with regards to strengthening our faith mine more than anyone else's to be honest my faith I still think is so weak I try my best you know I want to increase my iman so much but brothers and sisters together we need to increase our iman you know one of the ways is by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can reading the Quran and sending a great deal of salam and blessings to the Prophet who sacrificed so much for you and me you need to regularly offer the, all the obligatory prayers on time and try it on time I'm not perfect I don't do all of them on time but I try my best you know I do my best and inshallah I will improve day by day and offer a lots of Nawafil prayers, <coughs> keeping company, good company with good people who will help you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and discourage you from disobeying Him. It's extremely important because your companionship and your friends sort of define you, you know, because you probably spend the most time with them outside your house. You know, so your friends at your workplace, your friends at your university, college, they really do define you. You know, it's like the hobbies they have will sort of 
integrate into you what you, and the hobbies you will have will integrate into them so if you like music they will you know you will sort of find friends who are into the same taste of music or you know same taste of movies and stuff like that so finding the right friends you know if your friends are committing sins you know if they're going out with the girlfriends or whatever trust me you need to back off but guide them as well at the same time you need to guide these people if they're in the wrong direction fix yourself up and then slowly slowly guide them you know fixing yourself up is never ending till you die it's just never going to end and also guiding other people is never going to end it's something that you need to continuously continuously do for the sake of Allah but keeping good company is so 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 important I can't tell you reading biographies of the biographies of the righteous people like Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar bin Khattab, Ibn Khattab you know, reading the Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu, reading the, their biographies, I'm still going through some of them, uh, and it just increases your iman, it boosts your iman. You know, it's the level of taqwa they had, the level of fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala they had. These were strong, strong men, but they feared Allah so much they used to weep all night long, and we can't even shed one little tear. It's shameful. That's the sign of our Ummah and our Iman that we cannot even shed a tear one tear for for what we've done in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these Sahaba grams, these companions used to shed tears they used to make the whole area wet full of tears keeping away from everything that reminds you of sin and calls you to sin you know, um, in general, faith is increased by doing acts of worship and keeping away from haram things. So at the end, finally, I will be doing more lectures. I'm not, by the way, I'm not any alim. I'm not an imam. You know, I'm just a regular, you know, Muslim person who's gaining knowledge and you know I just want to share a bit of knowledge don't take any fatwas from my lectures or any rulings from mine you know what go out there find out for yourself you know open the Quran open the Hadith books and find out for yourself you know don't depend on what I'm saying but this is just a one-on-one -on -one. like you know I just want to express myself you know, I really want to target target the youth out there because I think the Muslim youth they have a great heart, they really, really do. But it's just the people around them. You know, this comes to the point where keeping good comp good company with people, with good people. You know, it's very, very hard out these days to find good, good, good friends who are following the Deen. You know, who are, who who meet the moral requirements. You know, of a good character, it's very hard to find that, and I can completely understand. So, that's the group I want to target. You know, those youngsters. You know, and you know, feel free to send me a comment or message me on YouTube, and you know, I can do whatever I can, my best to answer any of your questions. But finally, I want to end this lecture from the point that I started off with, dear brothers and sisters. Please, please repent. Make your tawbah. We ask Allah to help you and to accept your repentance. And finally, to guide your heart. And Allah knows best. Jazakallah khair. Keep your nidwas and keep posting, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.